Hey friends, it's Karen. If you're in the mid-Michigan area, come hang out with us. On Tuesday, September 18th, Jen and I will be on stage answering your questions in a live advice show called Tip Jar. Bring your friends in your questions to the Robin Theater in Rio Town Lansing. Tickets are sold at the door, and 50% of the show's proceeds will be donated to the Women's Center of Greater Lansing. Check out our social media channels at Easy Underground for more information. See you there. Genetically, we're both in the shallow end of the patient's pool. Do you think entrepreneurs are impatient by nature? I do. Maybe. Let's explore impatience in general and how that character trait has helped us win some and lose some. The Speakeasy Podcast. Honest conversations about leadership and sanity in the creative industry. I'm Karen Steffel. And I'm Jen Estel. Managing creativity and business? We probably have an opinion on that. No prohibitions. Clearly, we have cocktails. Let's talk about Cool Hand Cuke. I love that name. I do too. I am a sucker for all things cucumber. How about you? Same. This one has gin and pims. It's citrusy and it's cucumbery. And I'll tell you, the cucumber garnish on here will give you a nice lunch salad. It's beautiful. And it has the best aroma. The whole bit, the, all of it combined is just happiness. It's true. I really have a soft spot in my heart for Hendrix gin. It, I don't know why. It's one of my favorites. And I think Hendrix and cucumber are just natural pears. They are just natural. It's delicious. So we'll probably be having two or three of these today. Maybe. Well, the funny thing about this is we often try to get our thoughts in order and write some good notes, but we were too impatient this time around. I feel like I'm just going to talk about the things that annoy me and make me impatient. Yeah, I think we've often talked that we're both very impatient people. So where do you lose patience, both professionally and personally? What's your commonality? I lose patience so frequently, I don't even know where to start. I'm both super excited to get going and not follow the process and just jump right in. And I also have low threshold for redundancy and saying things twice and all of the above. Yeah, I think there is an inertia or a momentum in a project that gets rolling, right? And there's an excitement to everybody doing their thing and contributing their bits and making it all happen. And there's this, it's almost like a party. <laughs> it's like it all comes together and it's really fun so that when someone or something, whether it's on the client side or our side, when something is the speed bump, that's really hard. It, it gets stalled. I get annoyed. I get restless. It's hard to get that momentum and inertia back. And I think both creatively, but also from a business operations side, like that's really tough. That's a hard pill to swallow for me. Oh, yeah, for sure. The minute a project gets off the rails and slows down, its budget starts to explode, right? So the minute a project for us starts to slow down, we get very itchy because we know stops and starts are expensive. They add to the budget. They add to overages. So we get very impatient to finish knowing that's more efficient budget-wise. I feel like Entrepreneurs are in business because maybe the structure of an alternative maybe isn't as attractive. So maybe it's entrepreneurs who are, I want to make some decisions so that I can move forward without approval, right? So maybe that's part of what we're dealing with, The, the autonomy factor? Yeah. So it's like I can make a decision and move forward tomorrow. I don't need to wait for approval necessarily when I make a business decision for myself. So when projects are humming along, that's like just so exciting and stimulating so that when something happens that would stop a project on the client side or inside my organization, it's frustrating. It it has nothing to do with whether or not I want it to be right. I always want it to be right. So if something stops for a month, we have to have our conversations over again. Yeah, you have to start over for sure. The momentum or the inertia is gone. It's true. And that start over, every time you have to start over, the enthusiasm and the newness and the shine is a little bit less and a little bit less and a little more eroded. So those start overs and those long pauses do erode that creative sparkle. I think a sophisticated organization and somebody who's been around it for a long time knows how to overcome that problem, um, which I know we both know how to do, but it doesn't make it any more fun, right? Yeah. And, you know, for me, impatience comes professionally with the fact that after a lot of years, I can see something play out in my head very quickly. Yep. So I can go from the start, the spark, the idea, the creative brief, all the way to the finished execution on the media, in the public, with the social media that wraps around it. I can go through that in minutes in my head. And so in some ways, because there's lots of interesting things in my head with clouds and beautiful trees and unikitty and stuff, lots of great things happen in my head. But waiting for life to do them in the normal process makes me impatient. But you mentioned a minute ago, 
telling people twice to do things. So in general, what I will say is that I have patience for people. I don't always have patience for process, which is what we've been talking about. But I, I do have patience for people. I understand. I actually really love developing people. I love process. I love collaboration. That's all very exciting. So, And I even have a, a pretty good tolerance for failure. When we have something that's broken in our office, it's like, okay, this is what happens. This is how we're going to proceed. Move on. And we have a conversation to redirect. We have a conversation to complete how we finish that process and how we prevent it from happening again. But my impatience seeps in when it happens a second time. It's like, we've had this conversation. That's not okay. So I have patience for people, but it's got some only a little wiggle room. <laughs> it has a finite, it, uh, an expire date. It has an expire date. Yeah, it gets sour. Yeah. It gets really sour and stinky. You know, I have, an, I have a patience for people because I, I really get excited to teach somebody something yeah. or watch them learn a process or watch them master how to solve this problem. So I have lots of patience for that. I think that sometimes we forget to articulate to our staff that process you went through, that system that we talked about last time, it still applies. It iterates. Yeah. And so, you know, you said in an earlier podcast that if you haven't said it once a year, you haven't said it. And I've taken that to heart. And sometimes you have to remind people that the systems and the improvements we put into place last time should be assumed to be standard operating procedure moving forth. So I don't have patience for having to remind people to do the thing that we figured out and solved last time. Yeah, absolutely. So I read an article recently about that warned entrepreneurs about ready, fire, aim. Okay. Okay. So it's like, you know, not evaluating the circumstance thoroughly enough. Because, you know, we y you just said, you know from the spark of an idea exactly how it's going to play out, which is your instinct as an entrepreneur, which means that you are seasoned as a professional, right? And there are times where taking pause might win us, and there are times where taking pause loses, right? You're not going to have very accurate outcomes if you ready, fire, aim, right? <laughs> it just doesn't work <laughs> that way. So there's, it was interesting, and, I, and I'm not sure I totally – it was just been this summer that that was uh, published. I'm not sure I'm totally on board with it, but it caused me to scratch my head for a minute because in my opinion – my impatience has won me more than it's lost. I truly think that it's decision move forward, right? It's hunger, succeed, win. It's following my passion. It's trust, like you said, it's trusting your instinct. Well, that's true. We recently had a meeting with a client who were doing a multi-phase project, and we did phase one. Then they did some very deep feedback and focus grouping. Now we're able to refine and redo and make it better. So in, so in that way, we did ready, fire, aim, right? We did our upfront work, got that first phase of the project done very successfully and with very, very good feedback quite quickly, really, in the scheme of things. But then, because it was a multi-phase project, we're able to assess it with the audiences, get some feedback, tweak, refine, improve. And that process, to me, makes me really happy. So that feeds my need for doing it fast, while it also feeds the need for refining that product. So sometimes it works, sometimes it does not. I would challenge you, though. I still think that you still did ready, aim, fire, but that you just had a second round because sure. you never produce a product without really being thoughtful about what the aim is. That's just not what Red Hat does. So I think you did ready, aim, fire, and maybe the target wasn't on the bullseye. And so that you did ready, aim, fire. There's a second iteration to narrow the focus. Maybe that's true. I think that comes from experience, right? Because as I was talking earlier about standard operating procedures, and we've talked about this before, even in creativity and even in invention and problem solving, there are tools that you can go back to again and again because you know they work. And so the more you do it, the faster you are at implementing those thought processes and the, the faster you are at using those tools. But interestingly, I find myself impatient with people who don't use those tools and do the thinking. Mm -hmm. I find myself very impatient with somebody who just does without thinking first. Yeah, absolutely. I think our industry is fraught with people who do without thinking because the doing is the fun part. The thinking is the heavy lifting part. The thinking is the part that is the distinction between just being excited about the the shiny, pretty, fun, cool thing and the thing that's actually effective that's also still cool, shiny, 
fun, right? That's true. You know, okay, so we've talked about this professionally. We said we'd talk about it personally. Are you patient when you, in your personal space? Mm, so it, at home, I am not the patient side of my marital equation. I think I am pretty patient with my kids, but I'm also pretty rigorous. But I'm definitely not the patient parent. But I'm not explosive either. I, you know, I, I feel like it's always lessons. Every day it's baby steps and lessons. My kids are younger than yours, so they have heard the thing that I say less than your children have heard the thing that you say, right, just by virtue of their age. But, yeah, I think in general, like, I'm, I'm patient in traffic. I'm patient – just in general, I'm patient with people. But uh, I don't like having to retrace my steps. I feel like once I've made my position clear at home or at work, it's like, no, this is a standard operating procedure. Cut it out. Yeah. That's funny because I have gained – considerable amount of patience in the past couple of years as I've moved into teenage land and knowing that I have very little control anymore Mm -hmm. between sports and extracurricular activities and school and more extracurricular activities. There are demands on our family's time that I have zero control over. And I, I think I've done a decent job giving up control and being very patient with that process. So I think for me, the, the patience or impatience in the world more has to do with things I can control than the things I can't. So I think I've gotten decent at giving up control. Like traffic, you can't control traffic, so why be impatient, right? Yeah, actually, that's actually a perfect way to articulate that because professionally, I think it's the same thing. I can control how I train someone, but once once we've talked about it and the expectation has been set, then that's how it will go, right? Patient, if there's failure, hey, we learned from that process, but don't do that again, right? So, you know, it, it's a bit of a dance. It's a give and take in development with people. But the impatience piece is, like, it should have gone different. Yeah. 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 So what do you do when, you're, when you are losing patience? Mm. Well, I think this podcast, like, we've talked so many times, support from others <laughs> is so <laughs> helpful. So whether that means you need to vent and move on or whether you need to walk away. But I, I think um, support from others – or um, just walking away is actually my biggest coping skill. You know, I have a friend who is, she's just so excellent at making the joke in any situation. Life can be really dire. People can be ill. Bad things can be happening. And she can find a way to make it lighthearted to make a joke about it. Not a very kind joke, but just to see the humor in every situation. Mm-hmm. And I, I always strive to be her and, and see the humor in whatever situation rather than being impatient about it. That's yeah. an amazing skill. I'm not good at it. Mostly I have to walk away and find a find a drink. Mm-hmm. Yeah, absolutely. Well, and alone time, right? So when you can't control something or when the things you are impatient with are beyond really you're being able to manage them, Sometimes walking away and getting into a space where you can control what you're working on or what you're thinking or where you're spending your time can really help you gain that balance, I suppose. Yeah. Well, earlier you talked about it's a mindset, right? And so I think that speaks to needing to reframe it or just get, gain perspective. I always find myself, though, particularly in the business realm where you think in terms of months and quarters and years and et cetera, I still – after all of these years, get impatient when somebody says we can get we can fit that in in three months. I'm like, what do you mean three months? Somebody somebody just told me we could attend something three calendar months from now, and I lost my marbles internally in my head. I'm like, this is ridiculous. Why is it going to take so long? We should be able to make this decision in two weeks. I find myself having those those thoughts all the time. I have the gate between my brain and my mouth has gotten a little bit better. Yeah, because intellectually. I know that's realistic. Mm -hmm. So I think for me, patience or the lack thereof, there's something between your instinctual response and your logic response because your logic brain comes in slower, right? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I think for me in general, my summary is that I've never been a runner, a long distance runner. I'm never going to be a half marathoner or a marathoner. And so for me, I've always been a sprinter in decision making, in... (laughs) Like, that's just who I am. Yeah. And so I feel like as I age, I learn that relationships are long games. They're marathons. And so whether I'm parenting somebody or whether I'm developing, you know, an employee or developing a client relationship, those are all marathons, which is not how I'm wired. It's like now, 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 
How quick can we get this done? How quickly can we move? I made my decision. Why is everybody else falling behind? That's a 50-yard dash. So so it, it is my maturity only that's kind of helping me understand that things are long games, but it's not my natural wiring. And so I think that uh, my impatience allows me to succeed in the area of decision, go for it, decision, go for it, or following my passion or knowing that intuition, like you were saying, but in general, waiting for it to play out requires me to appreciate the long game. Which is hard for people like you and I. Oh, man. I appreciate your metaphor of, of the marathon because I, in my younger days, did triathlons, the mini, you know, mini tries, which is great because it's three shorter things instead of one long thing, which also uh, tends to my attention span. I don't have attention span for one big long thing. I have an attention span that is suited to many input at a time. Mm-hmm. Like um, you're crafting, your serial crafting. Yeah. Like, like, ooh, I'm going to do this, and now I'm going to do this, and now I'm going to do that. But the other downfall I have when it comes to being patient is I feel like, oh, I've told you we're friends and that I support you and that um, we're going to be friends for a long time. Great. I don't need to talk to you for months. I've got other things to do. Next, I feel like I should have wrapped something up tight. It's all settled, and I might not have to touch it for a year, whereas relationships, for example— you maybe need to touch them more frequently than mm-hmm. that, both personal and professional, right? Yeah. Most people don't say, oh, yeah, but last February she said it was all good. That brings doubt and confusion. And so I have to work very hard and not saying, yeah, but last February we were good. So move on. I've got stuff to do. So yeah. I struggle with that one. Yeah, but you're a gardener, so you know the cultivation process. Yeah, that doesn't mean I'm patient with it <laughs> or I don't get bored with it. There's a place in mid, like late summer where I get so bored with gardens and the weather is hot and the rain is not. Do you still need water for God's sake? I have to water you again? For fuck's sake. (laughs) I mean, those are thoughts that actually go through my head. So maybe I'm a fair weather guard. I don't. Never mind. (laughs) Well, you're not a fair weather friend. Thanks. That's yeah. nice of you to say. Of course. Yeah. I mean, I think there's a huge balance to be found between patience and lack thereof. I think there are times when it really does serve you. And, you know, the early bird gets the worm, right? Yeah. And in an entrepreneurial or small business setting, being the go-getter gets you places. Being there before someone else and coming up with the idea first, those things all really can suit us. Absolutely. I, I think impatience is a virtue as long as you can balance where, especially in the human aspect where, you know, we're patient with the things that we cannot control. You know what I can't control? Cool Hand Cuke being gone. <laughs> cool Hand Cuke is such a great name. Oh, my goodness. So cucumbers and hedricks and all the things that go with it, like the PIMS. So you guys can check this out on our website. It's uh, the speakeasypodcast.com. Go grab a recipe and make your own. Or on all the social channels at Easy Underground or your favorite place to find your podcast, like Apple Podcasts, uh, Google Play, etc. Cheers. Next episode, we're talking about difficult decisions. We have all been there at work and at home where all potential outcomes are not ideal. We'll explore what the patterns are and what we do in our decision-making process and also how we communicate those decisions to the people in our lives. So please join us. 